Hi, Chris Mason again. I'm the co-owner of At-Large Nutrition and I posted a blog last night uh, that addressed protein and its place in supplementation today. Uh, kind of where I think, uh, or the way I see things going regarding protein, or they've been going this way for a while. It's just kind of come to a head in my mind as of late. Uh, and I wanted to go a little bit more into detail about that. So let's start with protein. What, what purpose does protein serve as a nutritional supplement? What is it going to do for you as a bodybuilder, a power lifter, Olympic lifter, whatever sort of athlete you may be? Uh, protein is a macronutrient. It's a food stuff. Uh, supplemental protein is just a concentrated version thereof. And supplemental protein, specifically milk proteins, whey and casein, which are the most popular, uh, are not ergogens. Uh, and this is the big clarification I want to make. I think too many young men, and perhaps women, and maybe not so young after all, but too many people out there have been brainwashed by the supplement industry, by the bodybuilding magazines, by the online websites, by the bro sciences, the term we like to see out there online these days. Um, to, to think that somehow protein supplementation is akin to s taking steroids. In other words, that it's going to make you, you take protein, you ingest some extra protein, you're going to become big and strong. Not happening. Protein supplementation, first off, in, in America, or in, in the Western nations, uh, there isn't any sort of uh, 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 protein deficiency amongst the population. People are not protein deficient as a rule. In fact, it's probably quite the opposite. They probably consume more than they need. Uh, of course, now, intense training is going to increase that need. But nevertheless, most people, their diets are quite adequate relative to protein intake, especially if they're not on a hypocaloric or low-calorie diet, trying to lose body fat, etc. So when they ingest protein, additional supplemental protein, essentially all they're doing is giving themselves extra calories. They're really not doing a whole heck of a lot towards building of anything with a couple of notable exceptions. Um, protein and carbohydrates combined and also some fat should be added in there but again as I said yesterday that's the fats parts a little separate uh, issue I'll talk about some other time. Protein and carbohydrates have been demonstrated in the lab there's plenty of science behind it and, and in the empirical evidence in the real world uh, to work as both pre and post workout supplements in other words, if you consume a protein shake, a combination of protein carbohydrates prior to training or immediately after training or during training for that matter, um, you are going to see a benefit uh, from that. The benefit is going to be derived from the fact that ingesting protein, whole proteins, just amino acids like leucine by themselves can do this too, stimulates protein synthesis. After you train, if you were in a fasted state, which if you hadn't eaten in a while, and you train with weights, here's what happens, a tense training session, your, your body's protein synthesis is increased after training, even if you haven't eaten anything. However, protein breakdown, catabolism, degradation is also increased, and it's increased to the point, again, in the fasted state where the degradation exceeds the synthesis. So basically, you end up in what they call a catabolic or a net negative nitrogen state. Bad deal. So either A, if you eat food, or B, if you consume supplemental protein with carbohydrates, you can reverse that trend. Now you can do it with just protein, but the carbohydrates augment the effects, plus they help to restore glycogen stores, which is a whole separate issue. Um, but it, it works. The science is there. For example, after you train, your muscle cells are volumized. That's a result of training. Volumization also enhances protein and glycogen synthesis. So if you have more available if you have amino acids available because you ate something or drank it in this case and you have carbs available you're going to get again an enhanced effect you're going to you're going to synthesize even more protein new protein make new protein that's what synthesize means and you're going to synthesize new glycogen in other words muscle glycogen which is the uh, the fuel of preference for high intense uh, high intensity uh, muscular contractions Okay, so there's some science there. So if you're going to supplement with protein, you would use it for pre-workout or post-workout purposes. Now you can have food in lieu of that and it's going to work just fine. Uh, supplemental protein, really, the benefit of it is its ease, uh, you know, ease of use. It's really easy to put some powder in a 
in a shaker, bring it to, bring it with you to the gym, put some water in it, pound that bad boy, and you've got your post-workout meal or pre-workout meal. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, um, what's the word? I will just say ease of use standpoint. Um, also, it, there may be some benefit to drinking these calories in the sense that that you may get a slightly better absorption rate. There's a little bit of science to, to support that. Uh, so supplemental protein, just in a wrap, ain't going to make you huge, ain't going to make you big by itself. It just isn't. It's not an ergogen. Ergogen is being defined as something which improves performance. Okay, it's not that, period. It can't help with recovery in pre and post workouts. So remember that. Now, if you want to get big and strong, and 99% of the people that train with weights want to get bigger or stronger, uh, bodybuilders, pilots, doesn't matter. If you want to get bigger and stronger, you want to take an ergogen. There's very few proven ergogens out there, not counting steroids, not counting hormones. Non hormonal ergogens, there's very few. Uh, three of them that I can list, the first two being definitive and, and, and uh, let's say the, 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 uh, the apex ones, creatine and beta alanine. Both products have been shown to increase lean muscle mass, increase strength, increase strength endurance, uh, and then they both have some independent effects. And, believe it or not, and, and or, uh, in a, which is kind of cool, they have additive effects. In other words, they work via separate pathways to achieve a similar goal, so if you take both together, you'll get an augmentation, you'll get the benefits of both and they don't overlap each other. So if you say, just for, for example, if you were gaining three pounds from taking creatine and three pounds from taking beta alanine, you'd actually gain six pounds. They're additive. Does that make sense? Okay, so creatine and beta alanine are definitive ergogens. Don't waste your money on protein if you want to get bigger or stronger. Waste your money if you're going to spend your money. If you're going to supplement, spend it on an ergogen that's proven to work. It's going to do what you want. That's the deal. Um, HMB is another one. Uh, some argue, you know, some, uh, let's say, scientific argument about that. Uh, but there's plenty of science to support it. And actually, what I found, uh, what we found, is that HMB in combination with creatine and beta alanine and, and all three together creates a really what I call a super supplement. It's a very effective additive effects again, blunts catabolism, promotes protein synthesis, promotes uh, 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 again that absolute strength, strength endurance, uh, uh, actually with the beta alanine some, some midterm endurance, uh, also HMB's had some endurance effects. So anyway, great stuff for anybody that trains with weights. Now we of course sell a product called results that, that contains beta alanine, creatine, and HMB, all at proven doses, um, with some dextrose, by the way, spike your insulin, which is a whole separate issue. You don't want to spike insulin a lot, but you do want to spike it in the post-workout environment or right before you train. Either way, it's going to be fine because it's going to stay spiked for a period of time. Anyway, separate issue. We'll get into that some other time. Um, and listen, you don't have to buy my products. If you want to buy somebody else's, fine. But if you want to get big and strong, skip the protein, get yourself beta alanine, get yourself creatine, serve yourself well. And again, I say skip protein. You can get protein. Look, we sell it. It's our number one seller. You can get protein, uh, but you just want to use it strictly for that pre and or post workout uh, shake. And that's it. You don't need it otherwise. Again, unless you're on a hypocaloric diet, uh, trying to lose body fat, because then it's a very good source of low calorie, high quality protein. Um, but let's get that straight. So for all you kids out there, all you young guys and gals who want to get big and strong, football players, high schoolers, whatever it may be, anybody, don't believe the hype. Believe the facts. And if you want to get results, get yourself beta alanine, creatine, HMB, at least beta alanine and creatine. And uh, please, if you will, we'd be happy if you would uh, patronize uh, uh, our company, but uh, otherwise, <laughs> Uh, it's okay to go ahead and buy from somebody else, but just get that for yourself. Do yourself a favor. Thanks for taking the time to watch this.